5.17 a.m. Deep winter. Street lights flicker across the Mississippi Valley as a low roar swells. Coffee mugs slide. Bed frames creak. In seconds, the grid blinks and neighborhoods go dark. 31 million people feel motion with no warning, unsure what's breaking under them. The fault that isn't supposed to exist is moving again beneath cornfields, interstates, and the nation's river hubs. To understand why, we need to go back. In 1811 and 1812, the river ran backward. Church bells rang far to the east. Ground cracked and spat sand. Intraplate waves travel far. Soft valley sediments amplify shaking and old brick cities are brittle. Watch Memphis, St. Louis, and Chicago in the next hours. Act on the woven cues. Start with the ground itself. The new Madrid seismic zone sits inside a failed rift, an ancient tear that tried to split North America and stalled. A failed rift doesn't vanish. It leaves zones of weakness like fine lines in tempered glass. Over centuries, plate motion presses on those lines. Think of a spring wound slowly, one turn a year. When it slips, centuries unload in seconds. Rupture initiates beneath the Mississippi embayment. It's still dark, and long period waves, slow, rolling energy, spread through deep sediments that fill the basin. Hard rock carries energy well, so this isn't a coastal quake that fades in a few miles. It keeps going. Towns far from the epicenter feel motion that lasts and builds. Bridges begin to sway beyond what older design assumptions expected. Expansion joints clatter. Sensor arrays trigger alarms. At river terminals, gantries halt mid-lift, and operators hit emergency stops. Rail yards lock their switches. The system freezes by design to prevent worse. On the block level, the human picture sharpens. Brick row houses crack along mortar lines. Unreinforced masonry sheds chimneys and parapets. Shelves tumble in corner groceries. Mobile homes light and flexible rock on their blocks and tip on soft soils. In some low-lying lots, saturated ground vents sand, early signs of liquefaction. But it isn't just the strength of shaking, it's where the shaking sits and how it reverberates. Basin amplification traps energy like sound in a drum. Neighborhoods a mile apart feel like different worlds. One street rides a low roll, the next takes sharp jolts that snap brittle walls. Deep, soft layers stretch the motion so it lasts longer than people expect. Here's your first set of actions. Drop, cover, and hold on. Don't run during the shaking. Stay off voice calls to keep networks clear. Text if you must check in. Know how to shut off your gas if you smell a leak. Keep sturdy shoes by the bed so broken glass doesn't turn a hallway into a trap. Meanwhile, substations trip offline in a controlled cascade, saving equipment at the cost of short blackouts. Hospitals switch to generators and check oxygen systems for leaks. Water plants watch pressure drop as mains flex. Dispatchers prioritize structure fires, entrapments, and bridges. While the south reels, a wave front runs north into older cities that never planned for this flavor of motion. The energy lengthens into slow sway, the kind of period tall buildings can feel. Elevators will react. Upper floors will move. That's where the story heads next. Memphis wakes to sirens and a low rolling groan from the bluffs. Two river cities, both seated on soft ground, both threaded with hospitals near floodplains, both bound to the water by interstates, pipelines, and barge lanes that pinch at bridges. They carry the valley's lifeblood. Today, that pinch becomes a choke. At the bluffs, peak ground acceleration spikes near industrial districts. Forklifts freeze. Port cranes stop mid-swing cargo dangling over the deck plates. Along the lowlands, saturated sand boils through seams in the pavement. That's liquefaction, the soil losing strength, acting like a fluid. Containers shift in slow, unsettling slides. Warehouse racks snap pins and tilt. Hazmat drums tumble. A worker triggers a foam system as a solvent sheen creeps across a cracked floor. The smell tells crews to hold back. Bridges define Memphis. Now, closures yeah, fracture it. Inspectors fan out with binoculars, searching for spalled concrete and bent bearings. Traffic backs into. Neighborhood grids were never meant to carry it. Ambulances reroute around disabled overpasses, adding precious minutes. In some zip codes, a single collapsed viaduct cuts off an entire cluster of blocks. Door-to-door -door checks start where wood frame porches lean and the brick lintels have slumped. On residential streets, parapets peel from unreinforced masonry. Bricks cascade, leaving raw tooth lines along roof edges. 
Inside, plaster ceilings slough into chalk dust. Gas meters tick louder than usual. A neighbor hears a hiss, twists a wrench at the shutoff, and moves everyone to the sidewalk. Sturdy shoes matter now. Every yard has glass. Upstream, the basin rings St. Louis like a bell. The Arches Park is a sweep of open ground. People kneel and ride it out. Downtown, century-old schools shed parapets into alleys. Two flats lose chimneys through stairwells. Office towers flex as they were designed to, but clerks still duck under desks. In older districts, cornices break at bolts meant only for gravity. Fire stations roll their doors and pull rigs into the street to clear the bays of hazards. Impact spreads before maps can catch up. Gas leaks spark isolated fires, then chains of them where mains cracked at old joints. Water pressure drops, as ruptures vent into basements. Firefighters draft from the river where hydrants fail. Mutual aid companies stage on the wrong side of closed bridges and wait for escorts. The river that made these cities now divides their help. Aftershocks complicate everything. People step back into buildings out of habit. Wallets, pets, a jacket in winter. A second jolt knocks loose what the first one started. Search teams pull back, tag walls, and wait for a pause. It's a brutal rhythm. Advance, assess, retreat, repeat. Patience saves lives. When the building is older than the code that protects it. If you live in an urban core, treat facades as hazards. Avoid the sidewalk edge near unreinforced masonry. Identify an interior room without windows. Keep three days of water on hand and a battery radio for clear instructions when cell networks stumble. While crews fight fires and triage collapses, a quieter crisis builds along the river. Barge queues lengthen at locked bridges. Grain elevators shut to prevent spills into the channel. Pipeline operators reduce pressure to avoid a rupture during unknown ground movement. Fuel distribution pauses. Within hours, truck stops run low and hospital suppliers shift to contingency routes. The ripple starts at the water's edge. North of the main zone, a different kind of risk grows. The motion stretches into long, rolling periods. Tall buildings feel it. Elevators will stop by design. Streets will fill, not from panic, but from protocol. The skyline city on the lake is about to sway. Chicago's towers were tuned for wind, gusts that push and release. Long duration intraplate waves are different. They're slow swings, like pushing a child on a long rope. When those periods match a building's natural sway, the movement builds and lasts. The wave front arrives. Upper floors drift inches, then more. Security cameras show ceiling grids sliding on hangers. Elevator safeties trip and cars stop at the nearest landing. In less than a minute, dozens of shafts go quiet. Commuters on elevated tracks feel the rails hum and then halt between stations. Dispatchers voice a calm message and hold for inspection. It's not collapse, it's protocol. Glass doesn't like racking. Along the lakefront, where fill soils were placed over soft sediment, ground motion stretches longer. Older lake fill zones act like a cushion that never quite settles. Non-structural failures start. Curtain wall seals pop. Sprinkler heads shear and spray. Light fixtures detach. In spots, tempered glass spalls and rains shards outward, a hazard at the street edge. Inside offices, the rule is simple. If the structure is sound, stay put. Move away from windows. Don't jam the stairs unless there's damage, fire, or a clear order. Know your stairwell routes. Before this day, not during it. Keep a small go bag at your desk. Flashlight, water, a mask, and a copy of key contacts. That kit turns a long wait into a safe wait. Impact runs through the city's systems. Controlled evacuations push thousands onto sidewalks. Intersections grid as signals reflash and reset. Telecom nodes brown out under load as voice calls spike and backup power cycles. Data centers and trading floors pivot to generators without missing a beat, but they tighten risk and cut non-essential processes. Subway tunnels are inspected for joint leaks where segments flexed. Water plants watch turbidity rise as mains stir sediment. Beyond the skyline, the national ripple takes form. Freight rail dispatchers rewrite schedules as bridges along the valley await inspection. Just-in-time factories, far from the epicenter, idle because a single sensor or bearing carrier is delayed. Medical supply distributors push partial loads and reassign drivers. Fuel distribution lags days, not hours. Pipeline slowdowns and barge holds take time to unwind. 
Friction grows in the information stream. Chat groups spread rumors of a bigger one that isn't forecast. Officials strain to keep instructions clear and simple. Stay off bridges under inspection, avoid damaged facades, check gas before re-entry, and expect aftershocks. Clarity reduces load, confusion multiplies it. In the aftermath, the zone keeps moving. Aftershocks will test repairs, close what just reopened, and force new choices. Recovery in the valley isn't measured in hours, but in weeks and months. The next phase is triage. What you fix first when everything matters. Aftershocks start within minutes and keep coming for months. Inspection lists explode. Insurance gaps appear as deductibles collide with red tags. Crews triage. Hospitals, bridges, and water plants first. Portable spans and ferries replace key crossings. Schools close. Families scatter to gyms and churches. Small landlords face ruin. Renters in older corridors carry the highest risk. Levees show cracks where subsidence lowered crowns. Rain would raise flood odds. Anchor gas heaters, strap water tanks, and secure tall furniture. Neighborhood check-ins matter more than apps. Policy choices. Sharpen, require masonry retrofits, harden lifeline corridors, and weave early warning into drills. Pay now or pay more later. Publish risk maps, set timelines, and keep them. A buried rift under farm towns can shake 31 million lives in minutes. Distance won't spare brittle cities. Risk hides in plain sight. Soil, age, and design quietly decide. Who keeps standing when the ground lets go? Secure one thing today, learn one shut off, mark one safe room. Then watch our liquefaction deep dive to see how solid ground turns to fluid and how to defend against it. Subscribe to The Fault Line for untold seismic stories.